Hello, my name is Mick Burke. I've been suffering Parkinson's disease for nine and a half years now. And the reason for the video, one, is therapy for me. I like to test myself way outside my comfort zone. I don't like being in front of cameras or having my photo taken. So this is a bit of a test for me. The other reason, I'm on a course called Appermine. I've been on it for two years, just over two years, and it's maybe some information that someone that has got Parkinson's may be considering, and this video coming from someone that is actually taking the stuff might be beneficial in their decision. Now, you don't go on Appermine straight away. You have to have a day stay in hospital and take a, like a tolerance test. They slowly increase the apamine up to a point where the nausea starts to become a little bit too much. But in saying that, say you have the test on a Monday, for the, for the previous three days, you take a pill called Domperidone, which is a nausea tablet. So you, you actually take nausea tablets before you do the test and then they slowly increase it to see where your tolerance level is. If you're okay with it, then you, you're right to start the, the Apamine. Now, the other reason is to show, I make up, a, I'm on it 24 hours a day. There are different 12 hour overnight ones and this, that and the other. I found the 12 hour nightly one wasn't enough. Um, I needed to, to have more, so I, I have it 24 hours a day and I have other, other tablets every three hours. But anyway, that's, everyone's different that, that has Parkinson's, that's just the treatment that I think found best for me. Anyway, the making up of the Appermine. Um, I started off on, on a 5 mil dose when, once I went to 24 hour and it's increased slightly in stages ever since then. I'm up to 8.4 which is only a mild dose still. Um, there's people on, on a lot more, a bigger dose than, than that. But that's all I need at the moment. Now, this is the, the actual pump that you, you wear on your, your hip or wherever you, your pocket if you've got um, extend, extension tubing. I, um, I used to wear the extension tubing, but over time I've, I've uh, for cost effectiveness for me, I've cut the tubing the extension tubing out, I don't, don't really need it. But uh, everybody will suit themselves, of course. Now, your, your 10 and your 20 mil syringes, the reason for the 10 mil is when you come to the finer readings, like the 0.4, you, you need the smaller because it's got the finer increments, uh, easier to read, and then it'll transfer into the 10, into the 20, sorry. As I said, this is a bit of a test for me. And what we've got to do is quickly grab another 20. Hold on. Pardon my rudeness. These can become a bit of a challenge to open at times too, folks. Might have to grab the hard one. But anyway, that's all a test. It's all a test. Patience. Of one thing I have found, and I'm not a very patient person, is that you try and take things as steady as possible. If things frustrate me, I just tend to get up and walk away from it, do something else for a while, and then come back to it. I mean, I suffer from it, anxiety, depression, all that sort of stuff. 
the specialist done a fantastic job in getting me to the point that I'm at now where I'm even game enough to sit in front of a camera and perhaps make a deal of myself, but we'll see. Anyway, we put the needle on the 10 mil syringe. This is solely to mix up your medicine, folks. You don't have to jab that in. If you did, I wouldn't be on it. And with my dosage, I'll take all the first syringe, all the first ampule, sorry. There'll be plenty of mistakes. That one's done with. That goes in this little black container, Sharps container. You can get them from chemists. They're basically for people with with uh, diabetes. They're usually full of syringes, but you just get them to empty the syringes out and bring the empty home. That's a cost cutter for me. Right, uh, now, what we do is we get a bit of tubing with the needle on the end of it cap it and twist that on. I'll just show you in a minute. This is the setup that I use. You can get extension tubing that would connect to that, go for say seven, uh, half a metre, whatever. You can get up to a metre and then that other end would connect to this and you'd have a whole heap of it. But I find that that's enough for me. And um, I'll just show you, there are other alternatives to that setup, which is a flexible steel needle. The other ones are, I demoed this, trialled this rather, um, about six months ago. And it is one of the new things out. Same sort of thing, it's thinner tubing, a lot thinner actually, but it'll pump through what you need. And it's a lot shorter needle. You probably can't see it, but that needle would go into your skin at, it's at a 90 degree angle. Would go straight into your stomach. Or where your stomach is, it doesn't go into your stomach. And then it, it's got a, a adhesive and it, it'll stick there. I've tried that. It works, works okay. I tried it in the summertime. Um, went out and mowed the lawn and it stuck there just fine. Of course you put another clear plastic dressing over the top of that and it just doesn't stay by itself. It works okay. Um, I, I would try that again. And this other fella, this is the Rolls Royce. This fella costs, well back when I had the last price list, 165 bucks a month just for that. Whereas this fella, he costs $68.15. So he's nearly three times cheaper. The reason being, this has got a steel needle with a fine tubing covering that. What happens is you insert that into your stomach on a 45 degree angle because it's a longer needle than the previous one I showed you. No less than 45 because it doesn't matter if you go too deep and unless you're putting it in your leg, which I've done, and you go too deep when you stand up, your leg will collapse because you put it in the muscle. I've done that because I've got uh, legs like broomsticks. So that went out for me. So I generally work in from as far around as I can reach on the old love handles, around the top and bottom of the, the belly button and around the other side as well. You have to rotate your sights because um, you've got to give an area a rest. You do form nodules which are just hard lumps where the, the upper mine's been feeding in all the time. Yeah, it has a flexible uh, steel needle, as I said, covered by a fine plastic. When you're putting it in, you clamp that off. That just stops a steel cable that runs from the, from the needle back into this particular part here. 
And then when, it, when you're all secured in there, you hold on to that, you release the clamp, hold on to the site, and you pull. And that needle that is, that's attached to that all retracts back in to that which becomes a shaft's container, which leaves that on your, on your body, you just disconnect the clamp, throw it away as well, and then this becomes your connection point. You take that off, this one's broken, that's why I'm just using it as a demo. So that's supposed to just screw off and, here we go. Oh, it is still broken. That has a connection point, connects to that and feeds through the upper mine, just leaving a very flexible little bit of tubing. That's the majority of people use that. You, you, you've got a choice between the standard pack, which once again uses the steel needle, or what they call the comfort pack. They're identical except for the the uh, insertion needle. Now, what we do is we've got to prime the pump three times, so we push down on that, twist it around till you feel a click, and then with the tissue, it's solely the pump, the air, from the syringe to the tip of the needle, force all the air out. So if you've got a little bit of air left in there, once you put it on the plunger, it generally pu it'll push a bit of stuff up, so it'll force out a bit of air, and this is just purely to clear the line. But it, bear in mind, it's, it's three stages of priming that allows you to have that extra half metre to a metre of tubing it'll come out of this short one very quick like in the first first 50 so we've got it running now you start it up and you press prime and I don't know whether you'll see it but it's, it's starting to drip now whereas if you had the extension tubing on it'd be it would go to the second prime. It would be forcing through that now, running up towards the needle. The third prime, it'll, towards the end, it, it would run out, trip out the end of the needle, hence the three primes. For me, it's a bit of a waste of that mine, but never mind. The dose I'm getting is doing the job. We're just about there. There's the needle, that's the length of it, it's about an inch in length. But as I said, you'll feel, you'll feel two little like nodes when you rub your, your thumbs or your fingers on one side. They say that's the side that you should put down, straight on your skin. It, um, once the dressing's on top and it settles in and sort of holds it in place. This is a soft pack. A stretch, elastic stretch band goes around your waist. That's for nighttime use, I tend to like it underneath the shirt, but around the chest, and then that can dangle down to wherever you've got to put the needle. So that's handy for night because this is a day pack. If you wear a belt, well, that's ideal. And the hard case. It's specifically for working, as I say, ladies may be doing housework or the gents might be out um, mowing the lawn or working in their workshop. Okay, now it's time to do the insertion. We have the hard pack on for the day's work or whatever, travelling around outside. It's best to have that hard pack on. Um, there's near to no chance of it turning off unless it breaks down. So we 
It's a bit snug in there, no movement at all. So because it's so snug it'll sit there like that. I've got it on my right side because that's the side that's going to cop it. Now on the wings of these, the needle there, there's the two little tiny little knobs. They say to place those against the skin once the dressing goes over the top of that it settles down and just helps keep it in place in case you decide to break out and have a game of footy. <laughs> okay. I'll put it in with the left hand no matter whether it's a tremor or not. It won't do much damage. Press it against the skin. It's the best thing to do. Push it in on 45 or better angle. Today it's right near the hip bone. But I know where to put it now. <laughs> After uh, two years of trial and error. And most, most of you will find out if any one of the partners just watches it, that you'll find the right and wrong places to put it. I will have used further round on, on my back as time goes by. I just got a con one of the family members into putting the needle in. Anybody you think it was them that was getting the needle? But you apply the dressing, doesn't matter if you're a little skew with, as long as it's got a good seal on it. If not, don't waste the dressing. Just get a bit of, what that, get a PVC, PVC, get a tape and seal that off rather than waste the dressing. Or if you've got a lot of dressings, like I have, go it yourself. But I don't like wasting nothing. There we go. Pop it very seal again. Nothing to it. Once you get over, if you've got a bit of a fear of needles, you'll lose it over time. Believe me. Okay, now this is the part that I usually fall down. You've got to turn it on. It won't work if you don't turn it on. And I've done that more times than I've got fingers on and thumbs on both hands. I still do it from time to time. So I usually get a family member to just confirm it for me because I, I might relay it back to relate it back to yesterday. And I swear black and blue that I've turned it on. And it's not until I get a restless leg that I realise I haven't. And it takes you a while to catch back up, believe me. So, uh, it turned on, check the readings. No bowlers, no lockout. Flow rate 0.77 per hour, 24 hour period. Right to go. Now, even on that short, Show a bit of tubing, there's a bit of play area so you can slide that around. You don't want it around here when you're trying to bend over, so you've got room to, to slide it. And as I found, even with that, if you, if you get an elastic band, which I've got in the, in the bedroom there, and you put an elastic band over it, it'll seal it there, and that little bit, especially if you've got it exposed, so you can be walking past the shop and try just hook onto it and before that'll open we'll pull out of there. So sometimes I put a secure anchor point just to help and the elastic band. Okay? I hope that helps someone. <coughs> Pardon me. It does affect the voice occasionally too. But um, I always reckon I had a bit of a rough voice. Um, I hope that helps someone and if not all the cousins and relatives that see this it's something I'm doing for therapy to um, help battle this ongoing disease. Thank you.